Hey guys, it's me, Takani, and today we are going to be talking about Extreme Sisters. Let's start off with Season 1, Episode 1, Sister, Sister. Let's go ahead and start with Lucy and Anna. My name's Anna, and I'm Lucy. Lucy and Anna are identical twins. They do everything exactly the same. They're dating the same man, they wipe counters the same, they vacuum the same, and of course they dress the same. They are the same. The scene starts with Lucy and Anna cleaning their house and discussing how they want to be exactly the same. They also just mimic each other. Like they have to be doing the same vacuuming motion while the other person is vacuuming. We just think we're one person. We just think we're one person. They even shared a job where one of them got paid and the other one volunteered just so they could be together all day. They met Ben on Facebook, and after six months of talking online, they decided to meet in person and became a thruple. A match three made in heaven. In the confessional, Ben shares how much he loves both Anna and Lucy, and how he loves that they aren't afraid to be themselves. He understands that they wanted to be treated as one person, and he's willing to do that. He doesn't care if others judge them. They've been together for 10 years, and they're all really happy together. Lucy and Anna are counting out their Cheerio pieces. It has to be the same. It has to be the same amount of milk. They have to chew the same. They have to take bites at the same time. We have to measure our food, our drinks. But freaking Anna's toothache is throwing off all of the vibes. Like I can't really eat on this side. Oh, yeah. oh we have to, we're going to the dentist today. It's very hard to do everything the same when one of you's in pain. Anna and Lucy meet with a dentist and the dentist says that Anna's tooth is gonna have to go. And Lucy wants her tooth removed as well so they could be the same. Again, yeah, our life is hard being together 24 seven, but we wouldn't have it any other way. We choose this life. Anna then says that she'll deal with the pain just so that one of them won't be missing a tooth. I guess it's more important that the interiors of their mouth look the same than it is being healthy. Also identical twins, Patrix and Patrika are on a weight loss journey to get ready for their lifelong dream of living in Orlando. Patrika shares that she was bullied growing up because of her hand. And then Patrick shares that she was really into violin in middle school, but she decided to give it up because her sister couldn't do it. Even though she absolutely loved violin and Patrika said that she was really good. I feel like her parents should have encouraged her more to continue doing the violin and Patrika could have found something that works for her. After a heartfelt moment, Patrika shares that Patrix always pulls her out of her shell and has helped her believe that she could do anything. Patrika is married to Ron. They've been together for 20 years and have a couple beautiful children. The ladies start busting it down before breakfast, and Ron shares that he feels like a third wheel between the two. He says that he never gets alone time with his wife because Patrika is always there. Patrika and Patrix share that they want to move to Orlando, because of Disney, the palm trees, the beautiful weather, the water. But Ron wants to stay in Atlanta. That's where the family is. That's where his kids are going to school. That's where his family is. It's dinner time and they invited over mom and dad. The boys, Ron and granddad, all get to eat in the kitchen while the ladies and their mother eat at the dining room table for some reason. Patrika shares with their mom that they're moving to Orlando. And then if Ron doesn't want to go, he can stay back and come and visit as much as he likes. Mom is obviously not on board and doesn't want her kids to move away from her. Patrick shares that it's been her and Patrika's goal to move to Orlando. And she doesn't like the men that live in Atlanta. The fish in the sea just aren't hidden over here. Patrix wants to move to Orlando for the men, the vibes, and the plenty of fish in the sea. Plus, it's been her and Patrika's goal their whole lives. And then the mom kind of calls her out for being selfish because she wants her sister to uproot her family and her life and just leave her husband behind for Orlando when her sister's going to be out there dating and hopefully finding someone to be with for her. In the confessional, Patrick shares that she gave up a lot for her sister, and when her sister started her family, Patrick focused on her and helping her family instead of making her own. Patrick tells her mom that it's both of their dreams to move to Orlando. I think it's sweet that she gave up violin for her sister, but Patrika 
well, or the parents, should have really encouraged her to stay doing the violin. Patrika could have found something herself to enjoy, like they enjoy roller skating together because she doesn't have to use her hands, but maybe Patrix's dream was to play the violin. It's really sad that she gave that up for her sister, especially since she was so good. I hope she does go and explore it more again. Or hell, maybe they could start up a band. Patrika can be the vocalist, Patrix playing the violin, you know? I get it's hard when the world isn't meant for you. As someone who also struggles with disabilities and chronic conditions, it's rough when you can't enjoy things that other people can. But it's important to embrace what you can do. It's not getting what you want, but it's wanting what you have. I personally would never want to limit my siblings' growth and hobbies just because I can't do them. But I'm also not in their position, and I didn't grow up the way they grew up, so everybody's a little different. I wonder if Patrika feels like she owes Patrix everything, and that's why she's going along with the move to Orlando. Maybe she doesn't even want to move there anymore, but she doesn't want to hurt her sister. And I get that, but I also think she needs to take into account what her husband wants, because he's a part of this decision too. And she needs to have a talk with her sister saying, hey, I don't want to go. Or, I do want to go. Or, maybe you can go and I can join later. Or, like, something like that. Like, they can retire in Orlando for sure. Now let's move on to Brooke and Bailey. They start their introduction off plucking each other's eyebrows and chin hair. And chest hair, of course. And then in the confessional, Brooke shares that Bailey shaved her butthole when she was going into labor. So, that was cool to know. <laughs> After their parents had divorced, they jumped from house to house and lived with their grandparents mostly, so they grew really attached to each other because it was the only stable thing in their life. Bailey shares that she would just do whatever Brooke did, so when Brooke got a job at a snack stand, so did Bailey. When Brooke became a lifeguard, so did Bailey. When Brooke became a teacher, Bailey's learning to be a teacher too. For whatever reason, they decided to film Bailey picking up dog poop, um, with, like, a Walmart bag, and can I say, use a poop bag? What the heck? Why are you using an easily destroyed bag to pick up poop? And I didn't need to watch, like, they didn't need to include this scene. Bailey has lived with Brooke, Denver, and their baby for about three weeks, and Denver is ready for her to move out. First, Denver calls out Bailey for leaving her shoes on the floor and not putting them in the shoe rack that's literally right there. And I was like, eh, that's a little picky. But then he calls her out for leaving her underwear everywhere, like her used underwear. Like, come on, are you serious? Denver tells the ladies he has some rules and he wants the ladies to make sure Bailey picks up her underwear and also make sure that Bailey doesn't sleep in the bed with him and Brooke. They share a clip of Bailey sleeping between Brooke and Denver, and I really feel like Brooke should probably be more so in the middle, um, but I also get that she's pregnant, so she probably needs to be on the edge to be able to go pee. <laughs> it is kind of strange, though. You have to get out of here before he wakes up. And Brooke defends herself by saying, well, I'm not cuddling you, and Denver's like, in the sternest voice, Denver says, she touches me with her feet. The producer asks if it's an accident, and Denver says yes, of course. But she scratches him. She's got some long toenails. Bailey suggests that she can lay on the edge and Brooke can be in between them, and Denver puts his foot down and says no. Brooke agrees with Denver that she needs to detach a little bit from her sister, and Denver seems happy with that conversation. Bailey's boyfriend of four years, Briar, comes over, and they're going to play badminton in the backyard. While Denver and Briar are unraveling the badminton net, Denver suggests that maybe Briar and Bailey should move in together. But Brooke responds that they can't move in until they're married. That's just what they want. Denver points out that Bailey's fine sleeping in his bed, and he's a grown man, so why couldn't she share a house with Briar? Briar seems absolutely blindsided. Brooke is like, yeah, of course she sleeps with us, as if it's a totally normal thing. Briar asks Bailey why she does that and says it's odd and unhealthy. After setting up the badminton net, they decide to make it a competition. If the boys win, Bailey can't sleep with them anymore. Unfortunately, the girls win. 
Denver decides to go pout in bed, and Brooke follows behind talking with him. Then Brooke and him have a little discussion, and she tells the confessional that she doesn't want to lose him. And sure, they've had their ups and downs, but she's really happy, and she really loves Denver. But she also doesn't want to choose between her husband and her sister, which is completely understandable. Denver points out the photo of Brooke and Briar on the vanity and says that she overstayed her welcome and she needs to stop sharing a bed with them. When Bailey says that she's worried about Brooke feeling unwelcome in her home, Denver's like, why? Because she has to pick up her underwear and she can't sleep with us? I feel like Brooke is taking the conversation wrong. At least to me, it doesn't seem like Denver's like, she's got to get out. I think what he's saying is she's got to get out of our bedroom. Which I totally agree with. Like, you want some privacy with your partner. And he probably doesn't like waking up to his sister-in-law in bed with him when he could be waking up to his wife, you know? I think if Bailey just, I don't know, picked up her underwear and slept in her own bed, they wouldn't be having any of these issues. I'm an introvert, so I'm not huge on sharing my space in general, um, except with people that, like, like, are really close to me and can respect the parallel play but don't talk to me kind of situation. <laughs> so maybe I just don't understand this kind of bond. I don't get why she can't just sleep in her own bed. Surely they can handle being separated at night. Like they can just get up early and wake up early together and spend time together. It really has to be like first thing in the morning, you know? And I feel like Brooke should really take into account of Denver's feelings because he's clearly struggling with this and he's clearly feeling dismissed background dog change. Thank you guys so much for joining me on this reality recap of Extreme Sisters. If you enjoy the content, don't forget to subscribe and join my Patreon for more exclusive content. I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys! They're moving to Orlando. Orlando. Oh my god. To move towards Atlanta. Orlando. Oh my god, that's where they live! <laughs> to move towards Atlanta. Oh my god. <laughs> so she wants to move to Atlanta. Gosh, why can't I say Orlando? Orlando. Orlando. Oh my god. <laughs> to move to Orlando. Orlando. Oh my gosh. To move to Orlando. Orlando.